Arun Bhattarai's film, Snow Lion and the Glaciologist, follows the story of glaciologist Funsu Tsering. After his win at the International Mobile Film Festival in Paris, I caught up with the filmmaker to converse about the making of the film, challenges, purpose, style, and the wonderful world of storytelling through documentaries. I've been curious about your documentary mm-hmm. since uh, the first time I heard that you were working on something like that, mm-hmm. and that was when I was in Lunana, and I had heard that you were on a different part yeah. of the landscape <laughs> there, and you were working on it. So, yeah. could you share how all of it happened, and you know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, uh, for me, this uh, this film actually came out of my of my relationship with my main character. Uh, his name is Kunsu Tsring and he is a glaciologist at NCHM. So I, I know him from high school because he is my uh, high school, he's my classmate from high school. He's so, your classmate? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, so that's how I actually, um, I know I followed his work and, and then uh, I wanted to do something like around climate change, so I went to NCHM one day and I met the director there. Mm. NCHM is the National Center, Center for, for Hydrology, Hydrology and, and Meteorology. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So I I went there and because I was really trying to do something around climate change, around GLOF, and then mm. like people suggested that that's like the relevant uh, yeah. organization to go to. Mm. And then when I was meeting with the director, like. Like suddenly Funso walked in and then I was like, oh, what are you doing here? And then he, he's, he said, well, I'm actually a glaciologist here. And I was like, oh, actually, you are the right person that I would like to follow because I know him from high school, the kind of character he is. And he's like very open and, you know, like uh, very jolly. jolly and very yeah. dedicated in his work. Mm-hmm. And so that's how actually the like the actual story, that's how it, it began. And mm-hmm. of course, I spent a lot of time talking to him and what he actually does. Mm-hmm. Mountain Man is actually a 20 minutes uh, short film. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's not yeah. the one minute? No. Okay. So the one minute film that um, that was at the Mobile Film Festival is actually a small part of, of this 20 minute cut. And it's also called like, it's called The Snow Lion and the Glaciologist. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of give this name because uh, when I was talking to Funso, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was very kind of... Uh, inspired because he told me that you know like he's on the lakes <clears throat> he's trying to he's trying to measure the glaciers and he's been doing this for many years like mm-hmm. over 13 years now yeah. mm-hmm. uh, but a lot of people like when the locals see him on the lake you know like rowing his boat and measuring the depth of the lake they sometimes say that maybe he's the reason for <laughs> for for bad weather or he's the reason for like uh, like he might be the reason for a for a glacial lake outburst, you know. So it was like very contradictory for mm-hmm. me. So mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to because he also uh, he grew up in a with his own uh, beliefs. He, when he's climbing the mountain, or like deep within, he's also kind of uh, thinking about the beliefs that he has. So mm-hmm. like he, there is a big dilemma I- I- inside of him. Did you start off by uh, with that idea? Did you want it to be the story of the glaciologist? Mm-hmm. Um, what was the main idea for the documentary when you initially started that, before you met uh, Funso? Before, I, I didn't really have a, have any strong idea. Actually, initially I wanted to do something with with someone from NCHM only who is based in Lunana mm-hmm. and you know like they have this uh, early warning system yeah. uh, and then this and person yeah. who is volunteering and staying there has to go and all the time check and if there is like a possibility of a glove then he has to trigger the early warning system you know that's mm-hmm. his his job yeah, I want to watchman watchman <laughs> yeah basically yeah, yeah. so I wanted to do a document about him but when I went and when I was talking to the people at the NCHM and I kind of found out that every year they do this uh, 52, 53 day trip mm-hmm. up to the mountains, kind of uh, risking their lives mm-hmm. as well. Uh, it was like very inspiring for me that I will follow this journey. And obviously because it is, it is, a, it is a documentary and it requires a kind of a setup. So I thought that it's better to follow one person and tell the story through through one person mm. so yeah that's that's how the, the idea came about. so what was the um 
the behind the scene like did mm -hmm. you have to travel with them throughout mm -hmm. um, because i heard they travel for about 52 yes. days a year yes. it's an annual trip but yes. it's not just a one week trip yes and yes. they're actually going to places uh, mountains that are 5000 yes. meters and above yeah. so did you have to travel with them yes. and what were the challenges with equipment because okay. it's not easy shooting yeah. at that yeah. altitude yes yeah. so basically it was uh, it uh, Initially, my plan was to follow them for the whole 52 days. But later, I changed my plan because when I was talking to him, I realized that he has footage from like last three, four, five years that he shot himself on, not only him, but his friends, part of his group, you know. Like, on the phone? On the phone, yeah. on their own small digital cameras. Mm. So I, I was thinking that maybe I should somehow be able to put that in the film as well because it kind of shows the kind of passing of time mm. and how they themselves also yeah. changed through this process and and uh, so uh, I, I went up till Gangjula Glacier I didn't go up till like Thorthomi I went mm -hmm. up till Gangjula Glacier which is like midway okay like okay. when just you're walking towards Lunana, Lunana yeah just about two days away from from Lunana mm -hmm. uh, it was it's like about 5200 meters so we followed his journey while we were following his journey, I, I was really like shooting in a small iPhone of my, uh, shooting on my iPhone. Okay. And then while we were there at the glacier, then I like used my own, own camera and then luckily they had generators. So I could charge my, <laughs> charge my camera with, 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 with the generator. And so, yeah, so this, uh, this footage that I shot, I'm, I'm mixing it with footage that he himself has as well. Mm -hmm. So this year I specifically kind of trained him about two, three days before, like my main character, how to use the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And I gave him my iPhone and then he shot a lot as well, like mm -hmm. while, while he was on the lake. So I really wanted to, I thought that that also makes it very intimate at and the raw. same time. Yeah. And raw. Yeah. It's going to be a really, very personal film, like really mm -hmm. from his point of view. And I think that's the perspective that I really liked mm -hmm. um, when you were talking about it as well. Um, it's something else when you hear about people who have jobs like that. And before um, we went for Lunana, I had no idea there were glaciologists in the country mm -hmm. either. And then suddenly when you are in their workspace and in that landscape, and you talk about the nuances that you uh, incorporate yes. in your film, um, I think those are details that's very difficult. I don't know. I personally find yeah. it quite difficult to put it in a video or a documentary. Yes. So how important are those um, elements in storytelling, according mm. to you? Uh, for me, that is what makes the story. I mean, that's what, for me, uh, like every film, like I personally, I prefer to watch like documentaries, which are much more poetic. Mm. And uh, sometimes for me, I don't distinguish between what is fiction and what is documentary. Like for me, uh, as long as it is uh, truthful or there is like a real, like true energy to, to, the, to, the, to the shots and to the story itself, that's much more important for me. That's why, at least for me personally, I am not so much, I don't try to give out so much um like statistics or facts or, or information in the, in my film but i like to more go towards the emotional part yeah, because the human side, the human side. Mm -hmm. uh it's also because i know that there there are so many tv stations there's like you know like that's i feel like that's already being done by like reporters and yeah. i feel like more like mm -hmm. journalists are doing that so i personally like to go towards the more emotional mm -hmm. more poetic side of <laughs> because those are questions that are yeah. not normally asked. Yes, yes. What is their mental state? Yes. And what they are going through. Yes. I remember when I met Funso Sir and I met the entire NCH uh -huh. team in Nana, <laughs> and they travel with this giant boombox. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And they're karaoke almost every night. Yes. And they make sure the generator also has energy, uh, power to <laughs> yes. uh, charge, charge their, their. <laughs> their karaoke box. So, yeah. And then Punsasa was saying that it's so important to keep the um, the energy up for these boys yes. because it can get quite depressing in the mountains. Yeah. And I thought details like that were so fascinating. It's true. And. What were some of your misconceptions with, you know, the work that they were doing initially before you started? And how much has that changed mm -hmm. when you were with them? Yeah, that's, the, that's, yeah, I mean, 
the thing is in the beginning it's exactly the things that you are saying as well mm. because for me like a glaciologist is supposed to be like a very serious scientist you know like in the field yeah. and stuff yeah. like that but with numbers, that, with numbers and yeah. everything but then it was much more more like beyond that because one of the things is also that here uh, i just realized that uh, that in many countries like it's easier to reach to the glaciers because they take their helicopters or you know like or there is a road connected to the to to the glaciers mm-hmm. itself but here they have to walk all the way to reach yeah. reach the glaciers and that's something uh, that makes the journey really really difficult like to reach the glaciers is even more difficult than to actually survey the glaciers so mm-hmm. that's what i kind of realized through through this film it's really different when you go there you see it and experience yes. it for yourself yes. even um when we were at tortormi and rabstreng in yes. nana mm-hmm. um and i was sitting on this mound that was dividing uh, yes. the two lakes mm-hmm. and uh, karma devsar was saying how if the maritime uh, the morindi yes. uh, dam barrier if that becomes smaller than that yes. then tortormi would burst and then enter rabstreng and that would cause a really um, horrible flood even worse than 1994 yeah. so having that sort of eye opening experience was also something that i wasn't really prepared for mm-hmm. just getting to see did you have that kind of a epiphany would you call it um, yeah you know, it, my now i'm thinking of kind of uh, uh, doing this kind of going back there and shooting again i want to actually One of my ideas is to give a camera to Funso every year <laughs> maybe and then see after 5 6 years the the footage that comes out of it as well. Like Was he very comfortable? I mean, he's such a people's person. Was yeah. he very comfortable instantly? He was very comfortable. Uh, it's also because uh, we were friends in high school and then it's also like we reconnected after many years. Mm-hmm. And he really feels deeply about he's not just doing a job there mm-hmm. and but he really feels deeply about the, the 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 ice melting and he so it's like for me also it's for me as a filmmaker it's also a responsibility that is that matches with his in in, in many ways because mm-hmm. he he's doing his job and then me as a filmmaker i guess i can show it mm-hmm. to to the world you're so you're making sure his story is yes, told. told yeah it's not about just telling a story that oh here's a glaciologist he's yes. going there this is his work um that would also entail sound yes. and getting the right visuals yes. and really taking time to really taking time to immerse yourself in yes. that yes. so what were some of the difficulties in capturing that the difficult thing is obviously like uh, it's very difficult to film someone walking because you know like you also have to const- uh, continuously shoot with them and, and yeah. that's a really tough tough thing to do as a cinematographer as well so you can't really use a big camera for that purpose so you have to use a very small camera which has its own limitations so but you can also use it to, in such a way that you kind of feel that that's like a style of the film and kind of some somehow this small camera also can make the film much more intimate because you can really go close to the face and you can really feel when he's breathing and you know like when he's walking so of course there is advantage of using a smaller camera as well and of course uh, when i went there i didn't go with a professional crew i did the cinematography myself mm-hmm. um, all by yourself all by myself mm-hmm. and then the sound i had someone who is not really a sound person <laughs> but like who is like actually a tour guide <laughs> and who was who was arranging the the trip for me but these are compromises that you have to make yes. around here yes yeah. it's it's a compromise also because it's a financial compromise as well mm-hmm. like and at the same time it's also like the sound person i wanted uh, to take he said that oh he can't go he can't climb you know like he can't uh, hike <laughs> so i couldn't take him as well so so yeah there was a compromise that i had to make like it was much more more like a financial compromise because the guide who was taking us there like the tour guide who was taking us there mm-hmm. if he did the sound then like financially it's much more like a practical thing so i mm-hmm. trained him <laughs> for like 2 3 days and then <laughs> and then we went there he did the sound just the basics of yes. how to turn it on, on and off or just check the sound and tell me if it's not okay. working okay and uh, up there in the glacier i i gave like a clip mic to to my main character while he's walking on the glacier so that we hear him and then i was shooting from here with my big camera and i was really like running following him as well um 
but uh, at some point in the cold uh, the camera stopped to working yeah, somehow the batteries yeah. Won't work, yes no? yeah. yeah somehow the camera just died in between mm. so <laughs> because there's no other choice so i shot my phone and then later i came back and looked at the footage and in fact i liked the phone footage, footage much better because maybe because i was much more comfortable there and somehow like with the snow and with the general style of the film the, the phone really really works well mm. so i think it's also about how you can use the, the technology at the mm. same time but mm. it's amazing to hear that because now yeah. with the current phones that we have in the market yes. you can shoot films yes. and you know uh, yes. documentaries videos mm. everything on the phone yes. so how would you describe yourself as a filmmaker mm -hmm. um are you somebody who's very particular mm -hmm. of the equipment mm -hmm. and style yeah or has this experience completely changed yeah. um your idea on the kind of equipment you can use yeah. because personally i feel as long as you have a story to tell yeah. um equipment doesn't really matter yeah. you don't really need the latest you know dslrs or sound yeah. i don't know um, no i totally i totally yeah. agree with you i i also i'm i am not such a big fan of big fancy like huge equipment now especially big, Maybe like about 10 years ago it was a problem but now you can easily shoot with small like DSLRs or even with your phone you just need to make sure that the sound have a story story the yeah. sound is good mm -hmm. and obviously when it comes to the style of the film itself like the cinematography itself mm -hmm. I'm very particular that okay the film should look this way okay that I'm think but then that that like uh, the the that's not decided by the equipment you use i mean mm -hmm. with with any kind of equipment you can maintain the maintain the style uh, you want and also sometimes in documentaries especially uh, um the small equipment is a big advantage like for example right now the two of us are talking right now if there were like big equipment gears and stuff like that okay. maybe we would be much more nervous overwhelming yeah. yes mm -hmm. so but with small camera because i personally i like to capture moments as it is while mm -hmm. people are just talking to themselves you know like very observational kind of moments mm -hmm. while while they are just having their everyday conversations and i just stay here and film film uh, and while they are talking and later i kind of take out the best dialogues that they have and then put it in my film so and basically the script for me the script comes during the editing more than while i'm shooting that's what i wanted to ask yeah. you how much does your story change um after you've done your research mm -hmm. and then after you go to your shooting space yeah. and you meet the people you go to that place um, how much does the story change after that it changes a lot because uh, for me uh, i li i do documentaries because it's more like an exploration for me because it changes all the time and you can't really predict so uh, i always go with an idea like a very strong idea or my own point of view mm -hmm. it's more like uh, I write that down um, so that I remember it all the time like mm -hmm. before I go to shoot uh, it's more like the it's more like uh, it's more like the universal question that the film raises like what is the universal question that mm -hmm. this film is raising basically what you want to say uh, about the world or about humans or about uh, ourselves in a much more like you know more like a philosophical level mm -hmm. so what's the universal question and that's like a very strong prism through which i look at the film or i look at the characters but when i'm in the field i'm really really like improv i'm improvising all the time i don't have a script as such so i'm going i know that okay today we'll shoot this mm -hmm. but i'm always open to shooting something else mm -hmm. and then we have a lot of footage when it comes to the editing and then when we are actually editing it that's when i write the script like that's when because i see yeah. the whole footage at once and then i'm actually writing the structure the story mm. and i really like this process because it, it uh, then everything is very unpredictable but at the same time you also have a structure um, when it comes to to the, to the editing you, you 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 come up with a nice structure i'm very glad you pointed out that a lot of your story changes based on yeah. the people and I think it says a lot about how open you need yes. to be as well. Yes. And I uh, just wanted to give you an example. I think it was a few years ago, there was a YouTuber who came to Bhutan mm -hmm. and they wanted to work, uh, they wanted to do a documentary on happiness in mm -hmm. Bhutan. And I met with them and they had a very um, 
specific idea yeah. of Bhutan yeah. and uh, a very stereotypical idea mm. of happiness. And although we did give in our input about how complex it is yeah. and it's not just about like, you know, happy faces yes. and hospitality and things like that, but I realized they had come here with a very set idea. Yeah. And it was a much shorter documentary. Uh, it was a much uh, shorter video mm. for online. Um, so that's why they were not willing to budge. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think that was the best way to tell a story yeah. when you have a preconceived idea and you're sticking to it even though you're meeting new people and a lot of your ideas are changing I mean that's how I felt when I first went to Lunana mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people say that they're not very friendly mm -hmm. and you know um, you can't go into their homes with a camera and then shove them you yes. know shove it in their faces yes. um, but then you realize that there's a reason why uh, people up there are not necessarily hospitable like yes. the rest of the country. Yes. Um, so do you think filmmaking, uh, filmmaking has made you a little more empathetic? Um, yeah. How has it changed you? Totally, because I think uh, it's uh, because uh, you spend so much time with, 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 the, with the characters that you begin to see the world through, 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 through their lens, you know, like, so it's obviously it, it, it has changed me or I, I think so I think uh, I have become much more open to to other people as well and how they they see the world generally because you also have to adjust to how how they see the world and I think that's much more more important to show so that um, I think the beauty of film is that for like 70 minutes uh, if you are making a feature length film you can Kind of enter in, inside their shoes and you know like travel their own own space and their own world and I think that's that's the beauty of filmmaking and that experience that you went through you also get to share with other people who are watching it and in the process you hope that they also become much more empathetic towards other other people and it's a craft that requires you to listen yes something that i feel we don't do much yes so how did um Sir and the team react um first of all getting the documentary made and then you winning the mobile documentary uh competition how, how did they react no they were really happy they were really glad uh it's also because uh, uh the the short one minute film was uh, screened at cop 26 mm -hmm. so it was kind of a good platform i guess for for people to see and Kind of, it was like a message from, like a visual <laughs> message from Bhutan. So yeah, they were really happy. Like they were very, very supportive actually. Right from the big beginning, the director was really, really supportive, saying that oh, we need to, we need to tell our story because uh, it's also, I mean, the NCHM for me, it's also like a organization that's a bit neglected i would say because not many people know about uh, their work mm -hmm. you know they know yeah, i had no idea yes either. even me as well mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that they were the like the main guys who go up there every year like uh, the, to to measure the lakes and you know like i i really didn't know that like they they were like so they were doing this big work you know mm -hmm. because every time we talk about climate change we, we think about NEC we think about Department of Disaster Management but we really rarely think about the NCHM that so there was an office office and it's a really in <laughs> Ministry of Economic <laughs> Affairs exactly and it's a really small yeah. office and mm -hmm. they work with very limited resources sometimes they are cooking their own food while they're uh, while they are going up you know like yeah. they are pitching their own tents they are and working with very yeah, less budget yeah sometimes yeah. the glaciologists are you know like also loading the horses you know like they are doing everything <laughs> so they are supposed to be like experts and uh, but they are in the field literally doing everything and mm -hmm. kind of risking their lives as well often uh, like there there was footage from the last few years where we see sometimes they have filmed themselves like getting lost in the snow and they don't know where they're wow. going and you know like this kind of footage as well so such a dangerous job yes it's a very dangerous job we don't job, understand actually. how difficult and it's not like they're going to new places every now no, and then no. it's the same same glaciers. place yes you have to take the same route same route and there are no people there actually like on the mm. way even if uh, like something happens it's pretty much like that no people on the way Till, till Lunana. So, do you be continuing um, similar documentaries in the future um, with uh, maybe a different protagonist or 
different stories but around the same theme i'm interested now i'm 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 now interested maybe to go actually up to lunana and kind of uh, maybe do something with the locals there itself oh. uh, like someone there itself uh, but I haven't thought of the exact story, but yeah, I'm really inspired to do something around climate change. Now. That was a really different experience for me. I mean, mm. you have the the glaciologists yes. and the NCHN team yes. on one side, yes. and they have a more scientific approach to yes. climate change. Yes. But then you have the people of Lunana and the nearby villages, yes. and they have a different story to tell. True. So for you to experience that, I think that would be quite yes. fascinating. Yes. Okay, I have one last question before we wrap sure. up. What do you want the biggest takeaway to be uh, for the audience uh, when they watch your film? Not just the one minute one, but mm -hmm. also the 20 minute one. Yeah, for me it's, uh, it's about, you know, like uh, for, for a small country like ours. For, for me, I want the film to kind of travel abroad and for, for people to see like what it takes for a small country like like ours who is not actually responsible for climate change mm -hmm. to to kind of save their own people like we just like we are a very small nation small country dependent on like uh, outside aid and for us like what it takes to, to save ourselves from 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 climate change that's that that's kind of the takeaway I want from 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 the film that's great thank you Arun thank you for taking the time and answering all my questions. I wish you all the best and Thank you. can't wait to watch your 20 minute, the full documentary of Mountain Man. Thank you Thank so much. You so much.